Welcome back to the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Time for off the press. We do have Tunde Kolawili, who's on standby to join the conversation. He's a legal practitioner. Tunde, it's good to have you join us this morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. All right, Tunde. Very well. Thanks for asking. We start off with the Nigerian Tribune this morning. Looking at the top page, uh, top stories on uh, the Nigerian Tribune. As always, uh, the top stories will be a focus. It says APC zoning not gets chairmanship and South to get presidency. That's uh, what you find on the, the Tribune. Underneath your several riders, as party agrees to swap offices between North and South. Buhari favors consensus. Bagudu AP, according to Bagudu, you also have the APC won't collapse after. Buhari, that's what uh, Lalong is also quoted to say, because there's several concerns as regards the APC, not forgetting how the APC came through. I mean, we're still talking about the fact that all of this disunity and rancor in the APC is because they are a collision, and that happened in 2014. Postponement of APC convention explains Nigerians' shambolic state, the PDP is quoted. Probably might just be a new word for me. Gunmen said police station on fire and killed two policemen in Imor. Two security guards killed by gunmen at feeding station in Ogun. You also um, have another header saying Nigeria to sign $3.3 billion loan agreement for 10 projects. That's according to Finance Minister. Lekong Balogun to be installed on Lubadon March 11th, 2022. And you also find Deziani. The Ziani is 450 million bribe, ex-minister Sarah Ochepe, two others back six years uh, in jail each. Constitution Review Senate to vote Tuesday, reps Wednesday. And uh, just before we move away, reps grill importers of adulterated fuel as three firms deny allegation of importation of toxic petroleum product. Now, we hope that, uh, because this has actually hurt several Nigerians, and a lot of people are hoping that those behind this would be brought to book. Justice will be met. Cocaine, cocaine deal, you have court permits and DLEA to detain Abakari, six orders for 14 days. These are uh, some of the headlines on the Nigerian Tribune. Let's move straight to the Nation newspaper with the uh, big headline there. 2023 president APC zoning tilts ticket in South's favor. It sounds like music to the ears of some. 2023 president APC zoning tilts ticket in South's favor. And they have um, a list of what they call the zoning proposal. I do hope that um, it may not turn out to be one thing that will be denied by the party. But this is what it says. National chair, not central. Deputy national chair, not west. Deputy national chair, south. Uh, Southeast Deputy National Secretary, rather, Southwest, National Organizing Secretary, Northeast, National Publicity Secretary, South, South, uh, National Treasurer, Southeast, and National Legal Advisor, Northwest, with the following rider, Party to Adopt Consensus in Picking National Chair. Okay. Uh, lawmakers vote on Constitution Review next week. 67 bills for consideration. Ex-Minister others to get six years jail term for 400 and 50 million naira bribe. Balogun to be installed Olubado, March 11. Family heads visit high chief details on page 27 of the nation. Jonathan Kipp's mom on 2023 president's uh, speculated interest. Electoral bill, Buhari rejects provision on public officials. That's interesting. Uh, details on page 5. Britannia U kicks as consortium blames it for toxic petrol. Firms appear before reps, taking quite a while. Fraud, Okoracha evades service. NDLEA gets court nod to detain Kiari for 14 more days. These are some stories coming on the front page of the Nation newspaper. Let's take a look at the leadership this morning. The banner caption says, seven days to go. Pressure mounts on President Mohamed Buhari to sign the electoral bill. Civil society organizations embark on aggressive protests against delay. And yesterday, you had about 26 of them at the Unity Fountain in Abuja. 
PDP fingers top government officials. It may be signed in Mato Rouse's presidency, but uh, let's see how all of that pans out. Kwankoso Yakasai orders form third force ahead of 2023 elections. This will constitute the crux of our conversation as we pr proceed. Federal government will book bank launch additional $176 million recovery project for Northeast and NAS vote and constitutional review report next week. You also have strike. Reps urges the federal government as to, to adhere to MOU. And just before we move away, you also um, still looking at the leadership. The Russia-Ukraine crisis oil price nears $100 dollar per barrel higher since 2014 court jails ex-minister two others three months for 450 fraud and there's a lot of back and forth because you have on the efcc portal you have um i mean that report saying six years and on other parts you have three months that's been causing several conversations across board apc governors accept new convention date and zoning formula that's it on the leadership the Punch newspaper has the following headlines to kick out March 26th convention. Um, APC factions fault party. Buhari, governors op opt for consensus zoning. And uh, the following writers, Kwara Oshun Rivers, others warn APC against holding convention without resolving crises. Um, North South to swap positions, Aerofy. And PDP mocks APC saying ruling party unorganized. I think that's following from uh, the National Convention of the PDP where the current chairman of the party, um, uh, you know, challenged the APC to, to hold a convention. And uh, it seems that his challenge uh, is bearing fruit as they are finding that difficult. And more headlines are from the punch. Port congestion looms as 8,000 imported vehicles arrive Monday amid strike. This is on page 36, talking about the strike uh, by the um, declaring and forwarding agents uh, as well over uh, VIN and the evaluation put in place by the CBN. Uh, more headlines, Ngege Asu trade blame, strike national embarrassment, says reps. Ngege Asu trade blame, strike national embarrassment, says reps. Senators, reps to vote on constitution amendment next week. You also have this headline, reps grill all firms over dirty fuel imports may summon NNPC again. More from the punch. FG begins probe of airlines over alleged collusion to fix airfares. NLC IG disagree over police exemption from 13.42 trillion Naira pension scheme. And you have Desani 450 million Naira fund. Ex-minister jailed for three months gets 1 million Naira fine option. Hoodlums attack Ogun filling station, kill two guards. A cops angry as sergeant dies while opening gate for ex-governor Daniel's driver. And uh, marking day to install new Olubada, March 11. Lagos protest, no evil, must befall a Rebbe Shola Kingsman warn. And make you remember, uh, we had some pictures some days ago of a coffin uh, with RIP and bearing a Rebbe Shola's name. Well, his village people are saying, if anything happens, Okay, and, and the final one, court okays carry six others detention for 14 more days. These are headlines coming on the front page of The Punch. Let's have Tunde Kolawali uh, share his thoughts this morning. It's good to have you join us once again. Thanks for having me. So um, let's throw it to you now. W which of the headlines interest you this morning? I will want to start with the proposed information of the Dr. Lupa Ali as the head of the It would appear to me he will be the youngest person to be installed as a leader of the in the recent time. Furthermore, Dr. Balogwe will be one of the most great leaders. I think he has a gift in political science or the other part. I'm not too sure now. So we wish him the best of love and pray that he might have been his society under him. Now, 
I would like to go to the FCC uh, Police School at the Convention. Thank God, the party has been able to go and the president has also been able to go how the political offices are going to be shared among the different parts of the country. And of course, so you know my position, that I don't believe in going, even though we do have under the popular principle, the principle of uh, the federal character uh, and so on this time. My goal is good, is that most times it doesn't allow to get the best of our place, the best of our mind, the best of our people who is ready to do the correct help, the best of our people who know who know what to do with the Nigerian community, we are actually to get them using a zone form. We cut our losses in order to spite it. We must find some way out to guarantee equity, equitable distribution of property. We start places to sacrifice the best of our heart all over the world. It is the best brain to get to mind the most agile that leaves their people. Here, we go for pampas in their old men. And uh, men and women who will complain that working eight hours in the day is a cheap sum for them. That's the uh, root to try to factor us as a people. We have too many problems in our own state to not begin to kill the fire of war out and inspire the political war of the uh, president of government. Ministers and water. Furthermore, it would appear that the crisis in some of the APCC has still not yet been resolved. Take Kwara, for example. Take Oshun, for example. Take, I think, is it a river or there are about or something or there are about something or that thing. The impression we are getting from this is that we still have a power. That is divided again. So if the APC takes kind of confusion, and it is this divided amongst the uh, how will such a party to concentrate on good governance? How will it be able to win? How will it be able to uh, kind of guarantee the dividend of democracy uh, for the average Nigerian party? The truth of the matter is, in the past seven years, the APC has wasted much more time fighting among itself. They are naturally really the same opposition. Uh, Tundakola, well, I can hear us, please. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Um, so so let, let's look at uh, one from the front page of the Punch newspaper. Uh, Abakari uh, being detained for 14 more days after the court okayed that. Um, um, this also coming in a time when uh, of course, we've had several um, uh, cases of people being detained, you know, without recourse to due process. And we know, of course, we have the laws uh, determining or saying how much time uh, an, a suspect can be kept in detention for questioning and all that. So tell us how, how um, legal is this? I mean, um, of course, you're not questioning the judgment. Of, yeah. yeah, but how does this well, work? Uh, I'm not a fan of the uh, Abakiari. But the truth of the matter is that uh, taking a back here to go to get a court order to detain him in the first place, I think uh, for seven days or whatever, and then for another 14 days, is in violent conflict with the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And then there is also a legal authority which says every child, which is what they are not using to hold a back yard. It's not to recognize one now. The police, the DSS, the doctor, the army, and whatever security we have to have in the country are supposed to have concluded their investigation before you arrest a person. At worst, 
you could uh, ask the man, uh, put him under the system. But for you to continue to detain him perpetually in your custody, under the guise of the state, negates the and the fundamental human rights of the average Nigerian citizen. That has been inside the system. This is what we have set time to have longer. Most of our security forces, especially the CSS, especially the police, they don't know how to investigate cases or matters. What they usually do, pick people up, torture them, and then compel them to sign prepared to so for conventional statements. And then they begin to grant their own party can. The FBI in the US didn't uh, detain the uh, most public, woodpecker, and all the rest of them for this month before the public taking them to court. They already concluded their investigation using wire services, using video evidence, using social media evidence, and all manner of evidence that is used for them. But here we are just with that. We do the financing of investigation. So that is then, uh, I will not support. But again, you and I will remember that Apak here is one of those police officers who has one of the, I mean, utmost contempt of the court. There are so many court orders on Apak here asking him to produce the full year for this year he was kept in his custody. And who has disappeared for so many years now. And Apak here has left to pay any of those court orders. Furthermore, you and I will know there are so many others on the court asking a back here to appear before the court, even during the end, like last ten thousand. I mean, uh, um, back then, and there were two applications for them, the two others for that panel asking a back here to appear before the state, a back here to appear, and the police authority has provided never compelled them or never to appear to appear before the court. This is what we tell the security people. That when they begin to obey the law, when they don't show themselves for the law, that sooner than later, for one day, they themselves will require the protection of the law. This is a quandary, which I think Abak Yari has found in there now. And it is so important. But with that as it may, we should not uh, uh, trace the uh, wrong for wrong. And we should not say because it's said to be serious of the court and of the court of, of somebody who doesn't have the self of the law now begin to use the same against them. If the NGLA has not completed their investigations on the back yard, they should let them go home. And when they have completed the investigation, take him into custody and we think that four hours of procedure was to still here. Furthermore, I think what we are hearing about okay, what is coming up uh, with regards to what we are now, you necessitate us to revisit most of the cases that the back here have in the past. You will recollect that Evans has uh, complained bitterly mm. of how he was uh, uh, made to witness that education, of how his property was confiscated without uh, another commission of confiscation. Of how he was guarded and treated in the back yard with uh, suspect. We also recollect the one arm robbery suspect who has today disappeared in the back yard. His name is uh, Kudududu. He had houses in Kudududu, he had in Lagos, he had in Kudududu. What happened to all those suspects? And this one, some of the people that uh, they come and say, back yard is Kudududu. What has happened to them? Where are they to that yard? So we need to repeat some of these things. Uh, as we also do, as often we do the case, uh, okay. uh, right. this uh, drug uh, is, okay. and then this wire uh, fraud, the mm. case of backyard. If I were the IC of police, if I were the national security advisor, this is a good time to repeat all cases. All right, to, to the caller, Wale. Uh, let's, also, let's move away from that uh, headline right. this morning and pay attention to the Nigerian Tribune. Now, the All Progressive yeah. Congress, finally, they have actually agreed on a zoning formula 
and they will swap yep. offices between the north and the south. Now, according to this arrangement, all offices that were occupied by northerners in the last, in the last eight years uh, will go to the south and vice versa. And so, uh, uh, you know, there also seem to be a date for uh, the convention. Yeah, I'm hearing you. So th the question here is, um, how do you see this um, whole agreement for the APC ahead of the 2023 elections and, uh, you know, this arrangement and formula? Well, talk like I don't know what I don't believe in any good formula for some of these entities. The best of our business, I said, the best of our mind, the most agile among us, the best red among us. Should be the one that we should scout and push it forward to become the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the vice president, the governor, the good government chairman, and not pampers we are in all time. Furthermore, if you also look at the, this arrangement that they have given us to, especially uh, with regards to Jones, the same with the presidency and some of these other things, they would prefer that um, the flag bearer should be fixed using the consensus of the voter. The issue is this. This is still a proposal. It's not as if the APC has written the system. Our flag bearers are going to be fixed through consensus. So, this means that uh, some of these issues are still in the air, and there could still be a lot of problems. The APC and the girls uh, that get up to remark when they get to their convention that I foresee a situation in which most of these warlords will carry their supporters to the convention they may or grant and they begin to insist that uh, some of these uh, flag bearers will be fixed in a way that will be them and not in a way in which the party will want it to be done. So they are still going to be the head of the APC by the time they get to the convention plan. If it definitely was February 26, or some other day, they may have picked for it. Okay, interesting. Uh, uh, let's move over to one story that is captured in the Punch newspaper. It's also captured in the, the Nation newspaper as well, um, talking about the, uh, the imprisonment of ex minister um, Ochekbe. Uh, I'll just read a few lines from the from the punch newspaper before I bring you in. Um, it says that Federal High Court sitting in Joss on Tuesday, Joss on Tuesday, uh, sentenced the former Minister of Water Resources Sarah Ochepe to three months imprisonment. Uh, Ochepe, who served as Minister under former President Goodluck Jonathan, was sentenced alongside a former Chairman of the People's Democratic Party in Plateau State, Raymond Dabo, and the Plateau State uh, Coordinator of Jonathan Campaign Organization Leo Sunday uh, uh, Jitong. The three had been accused of. Uh, or had been standing trial since 2018 in a case of money laundering and conspiracy brought against them by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, amounting to over 450 million naira. So the punch um, um, linking this money to ex um, uh, Dezani, Minister Dezani's, um, sorry, ex Minister Dezani's 450 million naira fund. Your take, sir. Well, uh, most time when I say, or when I tell people that the Nigerian ruling government. Especially the law maker and the executive of government in particular, usually make law only for the poor people, only for the ordinary people. They hardly make any law that will actually punish any member of their own class. Sometimes we may punish a member of their class or some of these impacts if such a person becomes a very good harassment uh, to them. But generally, that is never the attention. You and I will know all these things that the call money comes to is merely stealing, stealing of public funds. But in order to put it to fund, in order to put it to sugar, in order to make it look palatable, in order not to make it look offensive to the ordinary man of the state, they say it's money laundering. And so, if a man launders billions of dollars, and a poor boy from Miami Coco, a poor boy from London Mushin, a poor boy under the street, is armed with a knife, 
I feel somebody now said they are caught only 10,000, 5,000 naira. The police will take him to court and arrange him for armed robbery, and then he will be convicted and then sent to the hand to the hand. But when the minister or a member of the ruling elite or a big boy in the society or a big woman in the society sees billions of naira that have caused us not to have two health systems in the country. That has led to the wrong part of our educational system. That has led to the dilapidated state of our infrastructure and our roads, upon which people are there on the daily basis. Then the ruling realized and our boss is very good. He is guilty of the only man, and then he is a convicted, still three months. Somebody has even been asked to pay, I think, less than uh, uh, 10,000 pounds for the exam, which are not long ago. One, I have forgotten the same uh, one director of the federal system. Also, look at what happened to me now. We put millions of dollars under the pension. Yeah. For me, this kind of uh, justice that uh, uh, catches a spy and allows the private to whip through the web of justice is not justice in our system. Every person for me and the person is concerned to have the same court and then to be given the same punishment that the ordinary person of the city will be given just as the rich people or the past to life they will uh, decide to get when they do commission of this person. Imagine what is going to happen to when somebody wants to read this story that somebody has told him for that 40 million we call the three laundry and then we send him to three months in prison with an option of five and then uh, if he's able to pay the five, he walk home free and then he probably also keep the huge sums of money that we have uh, stolen. Because when you say somebody has only two hundred and fifty million, that is actually what the charity people or what the IPO institute has been able to talk to them. Okay. They use layers of layers of history and strategies quite much more. All right, uh, Tunde, Tunde Kola, Wale, just quickly your thoughts on this one in a minute or two. Uh, seven days yeah. ago, uh, pressure is mounted on President Mohamed Buhari uh, to sign the electoral bill. And that's what the leadership is quoted to say. Uh, what are your thoughts? Do you see the presidency, uh, or the president, by the way, uh, signing really? the electoral bill? And do we necessarily need all of this pressure? Well, if the president were in the president, the ordinary name should sign. It would appear to me that I am the national assembly, and the ordinary Nigerian people, once the president is signed into the electoral appeal uh, into law, and you and I would know that the national assembly, or what I call the throne law, ultimate power, Life in the National Assembly. Ultimate power. Life is the center of our assembly. So if those representatives of the people who have the who have the utmost power under the Nigerian Constitution have made a law, it doesn't behold just a, a, an individual because he's the president to tell what the people, what the representatives of the people have asked to do, they will not put that part of lack of respect, lack of unity, and lack of feeling uh, to the sensitivity of people. So I will enjoy Mr. President's time when this electoral feeling is so, so that we can feel that we can have the next election. But so don't remember that President Warren is a very important person. He is not somebody who uh, usually uh, uh, listen to what the people say. For him, the people you have on the street, they are, they are mobs. And mobs are hardly able to think properly. And so if uh, the president begins to think to the mobs, then for them, they might not be taking the right decision. But remember, the people, the representative of the people, the people in the national assembly are good. And the earlier the president listen to what the people have said, the better for us as We should remember, God should not be made for individuals. God should not be separate 
Uh, thank you very much. Uh, very interesting analysis coming from you, Tunde Kolawali, legal practitioner and our guest on Off the Press today right here on The Breakfast. Uh, we do hope that you have a fantastic day and uh, look forward to having you uh, in the near Thanks future. For yes, yes. And it's been great because you, you're a lawyer. Thank you very much, sir. And it's a pleasure is on the right. You are everywhere. Fantastic, fantastic. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Have a nice day. All right. Mercy, it's great to have a, you know, um, a lawyer as an analyst for today because he's used his legal background to give us a very good um, you know, opinion Analysis. on some of the issues. Yes, indeed. Well, it's time to take a break. Of course, when we return, it would be heading straight to a major conversation. But in the meantime, let's tell you what happened today in history.